Welcome back to the Nerd Rotic channel. My name is Gary Beekler. I am live in San Francisco, California, and I come to you from nerdrotic.com. And today is going to be the first of hopefully many retro recaps. And I had to start off with my favorite television show, or at least my favorite uh, section or era uh, of television, which is the new Doctor Who from uh, 2005, the new era Doctor Who. And we're going to start off with the opening episode rose now you might have noticed i i'm this is from an american doctor who fan perspective all right so uh you know i give all respect to all english doctor who fans who have been fans for many many years longer than me uh i've only been a hardcore doctor who fan for about uh seven or eight years um i was a fan of it when i was a kid i watched it on pbs loved the tom baker stuff but became like just a huge huge fan, huge huge fan uh from you know the modern era and uh it was really thanks to netflix when netflix got doctor who and i was able to watch all of them over and over again uh that's when i just dived in um absolutely love the show and absolutely love the russell t davies era so i won't be doing every episode here on the channel here where we are doing every episode for um the the patreon that we that will be uh one of the little extra gifts we'll give to our our patrons but i'm going to be doing my favorite episodes here on the channel if you guys do want more and if you guys end up liking this uh please let me know and uh, maybe i can change my mind on that one and do every episode i don't know it's kind of it's kind of up to you guys really so uh rose is in my top 10 of modern doctor who i absolutely adore this episode uh we have the the autons in it which were um from uh the third doctor era and it's uh it, it's it's a lesson in storytelling uh you know so it's written uh it's written by russell t davies and directed by keith boak who most recently directed krypton i'm sorry to say uh, not one of my favorite shows. And within the first two minutes, we know the character Rose. Uh, actually, I, I really paid attention to it. I rewatched the episode before I started this transmission. And we start the episode off where we see Rose. We see her getting up in the morning. She's living with her mom. She's got a bit of a messy room. Uh, she works in a shop. Uh, she's, she's got a boyfriend named Mickey and she was out like having lunch and this was just a little montage scene and it happens right up until a, right about the two minute mark of the episode. And in that time, we know Rose. Um, and that is something that kind of lacks in storytelling these days. Um, to be honest with you. Oh, wow. Thank you. Grat fodder. <laughs> Grat fodder, Sorry. Hard to catch you online with the time difference. But with this show's theme, hello from 10 hours in the future. <laughs> hello. How's it going? Thank you for the super chat. 100, I, again, rubles? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit is right, Gravelaine. Um, uh, I, yeah, I can't tell you. It was really hard to, to watch just one episode of Doctor Who. Okay. I, I, that's something that I usually don't do. I usually end up sitting down and watching two or three. Uh, and, you know, and... Christopher Eccleston is one of the it's one of the greatest tragedies of television television that he did not get to do more than one season. I know it was because of him and his troubles with the BBC, but I really enjoyed what we got from this one. So we start out the episode and, you know, we got Rose. We we know her within two minutes, like I said. Um, she works in a shop and you know within the three minute mark we see her working and the, the story's already going she's on her way out the door from work and she gets handed a bag and it's uh, the lottery so she has to go find wilson the chief electrician and she goes down in the bowels of the store look for, oh and thank you dakota stanton for the 1776 uh, super chat bad wolf yes uh the amount uh was international yes <laughs> um it, yes it was uh so she's going down looking for Wilson, the electrician, and she can't find him, but she hears a little noise down there. So of course she follows it because that's what we all do when we hear creep noise, noises in our, uh, in our empty store. Um, and she walks through and she's, you know, she thinks she sees something moving. Um, and she walks by a bunch of mannequins. Uh, we think we maybe see one of the mannequins move. Um, 
and all of a sudden they start moving and they start uh, attacking her and um something happens that we don't see in tv shows anymore is a man grabbing a woman's hand uh because this is i guess is bad now and uh, we hear the first words of the doctor which really sets the pace for this series uh and and that's what this episode is so great at it's like this is pretty much action doctor this is a different doctor this is a modern doctor he grabs rose's hand and says run uh and they run and uh they're uh trying and and at this point i i did not know this and it, uh, some trivia popped up um doctor who is now on amazon prime and we love amazon uh i questioned the move from netflix to amazon for doctor who i no longer do that i fully support amazon because they save the expanse of course uh another great science fiction show um but apparently uh during this scene graham norton a uh, graham norton vo voiceover came over the premiere of the episode on bbc and uh the producer had to call in and they got it uh stopped just in time for uh the doctor to say run so he didn't so graham norton wasn't talking over that which is hilarious um so uh they escaped the uh the atons and uh you know do the doctor's like so what do you think they were and uh rose goes well they, they had to be students like only students have that kind of time to be silly and he's all huh that's actually pretty good um no wasn't students and uh she you know she said she was looking for wilson and and he's all who's wilson and she's all chief electrician and he, she, he's all well, wilson's dead what you know and uh yeah she's trying to figure out what's going on and he uh explains to her and she she has no clue what's going on but he explains that he's gonna save everybody even though nobody's uh appreciative of him uh you guys all eat your beans and toast while i'm saving the world you guys have no clue what's going on and he's got a little bomb he's gonna blow up uh blow up uh, the transmitter uh that's transmitting to all these living mannequins uh tells her to run for her life and he's oh by the way uh what's your name uh I, my name's uh, rose oh my name's the doctor run for your life and uh she's got the arm in her hand she runs and then uh, the building blows up and she's like oh shit and then just goes home with her arm with the arm in tow and uh we get to we we saw a brief scene of uh rose's mom jackie a character i love to death um but we get to meet jackie for the first time and uh she's on the phone and she had obviously heard what happened to rose and she's like oh my god your skin looks like an old bible i look i look younger than you right now i'm paraphrasing of course and uh we kind of see what kind of a lady jackie is and uh rose gets back we also get to meet mickey her boyfriend he comes in uh and he's uh looking like he's a little more concerned than he really is for rose he's like you okay you know you don't need tea she's drinking tea he's all you don't need tea you, you we need to really go to the pub and she's all yeah there's a match on isn't there he's all no no well well yeah there's a there's a match on but that doesn't matter right now and she's like you go on catch the match i'm fine everything's cool um her mom set up some interview for 500 quid she hangs up the phone on it um, and we see again, the great characterization all done in a very short amount of time. We see that Rose is really just unhappy with her life. You know, she's, she's your typical in, of the time, by the way, this was filmed in 2004, came out in 2005. Uh, and I actually spent a lot of time in London in this era. So I, I really loved it. It was right before all the buildings started coming up and it was a really, really, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I love London. I freaking love London. So that's probably why I like the show so much, especially this episode. Um, so yeah, she just looks like your typical London shop girl of 2005. And, uh, she's pretty bored with life. Um, she gives uh, Mickey the arm and, uh, he takes off with it, uh, and, uh, tosses it. And then we hear it kind of crawl away. And then we get to the next day. Rose doesn't have a job. Uh, her mom's like, uh, maybe you can go work for the butcher. She's like, I'm not going to work for a butcher. Come on. And uh, she's watching the news and they don't know what, you know, caused the explosion and all that stuff. And uh, we, uh, we know we, there was a death and then she thinks she hears a cat uh, and she looks through the cat door. She was yells at her mom for not sealing the cat door. And then we see the doctor pop his head and he's all, what are you doing here? And she's all, I live here. He's all, what are you doing that for? You know, and then she drags him in, like, what the hell's going on? She tells her mom that he's, you know, from, uh, you know, probably from the government for an inquiry or something like that. And she's like, yeah, she's got genuine shock and trauma. She should get compensation. Oh, yeah, we're talking millions, says the doctor. And then uh, <laughs> he's in the room with Jackie and she's like, oh, there's a strange man in my bedroom. 
you don't know what could happen. He's all, mm, no. Nope. And he walks away. And uh, so we uh, we see Rose is asking him a bunch of questions. And we see the doctor kind of flipping around her magazines and books and stuff. And he notices her reflection. And this is where we find out that he, uh, he recently regenerated. Uh, he's like, oh, look at those ears. Oh, my God. But not too bad. Um, so, you know, this is this is important and uh, it's important to, uh, you know, they don't really tell you what goes down. Uh, and I'm not going to worry about spoilers on this one. I'm sure you've all seen it. Right. Uh, and by the way, if you're new to this anyway, I do a recap and then we'll get to the chat uh, shortly. Um, so we uh, the, the doctor, this is the trauma doctor. OK, he's he's just recently back from the time war. Um, he's regeneration, regenerate, uh, from the war doctor. We later find out. Um, but at this time we were thinking that, uh, you know, it was maybe the eighth doctor he regenerated from and, uh, who just went through, uh, the time war, which isn't mentioned in this episode is, is alluded to, but it's not outright mentioned. Uh, it's actually mentioned in the second episode. Um, so, you know, it, Eccleston plays this so damn well. Uh, he, you know, he's, he plays like the quiet rage. You can tell, um, he's so method, this guy, you could tell that he's trying to do anything to keep his mind. Uh, the doctor's trying to do anything to keep his mind off of what just happened. And that's how it plays for me. Anyway, it's, it's really, really brilliant. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, he's going through all the magazines and stuff. And, uh, then he asks if she's got a cat and then the arm attacks him and starts strangling him. She doesn't notice it at first. And when she does, then the arm attacks her. And then we get, uh, we get, uh, the second appearance. I didn't mention the first appearance of the sonic screwdriver. Uh, we get the second appearance of the sonic screwdriver and he, uh, you know, cuts off the transmission to the hand and tosses it. And, uh, there, then there's this, uh, great great scene that i love it's it's almost done in one take and it's her it's the doctor and rose walking away uh from i, I guess she lives kind of uh in a in a council house uh which is kind of like projects i don't know correct me if i'm wrong uh those of you who li live in the uk maybe it was just an apartment building uh i'm not sure um and uh and the only reason i know what those were is i have some friends who grew up in them and um and uh, she's, you know, and the doctor and Rose are walking around. And it's like this big, long scene where they're just walking. And, and like I said, it's almost done in one take. And, you know, he's explaining to her, like, who are you? She's I'm the doctor, just the doctor. And like, and she's, you know, she's what he's noticing is that Rose is really asking the right questions. Like, what is this? I mean, are they aliens or, you know, is there a price war going on? Is it shops or whatever? And uh, he's kind of like in the, the cut of her jib, you know, and um. So she, yeah, she finally, you know, is trying to get out of him, like what he is, what he's all about. She's completely confused. And, uh, you know, he does this great little line where he's, you know, he holds her hand again, probably can't do that anymore and says, you know, basically I can feel the earth spinning. You know, I can, I can feel the earth moving through space. That's what I am, you know, which is not really an answer. And she's like, okay, whatever. Um, she walks away and then, uh, we hear the TARDIS whoosh. And she hears it and runs back and sees that he's completely disappeared. Um, so uh, Rose later goes to Mickey's apartment uh, to use his computer. And she starts uh, Googling, which is the, their version of Google, Google is uh, search wise net. And uh, she looks up Dr. Dr. Blue Box and she finally catches on to a, one, one site and a guy named Clive, who's actually played uh, by a producer from the show and i had his name written down i completely forgot it um mark benton that's right so he is actually a producer of the show and um you know she she meets with clive and he uh, when she gets to the house or his son shows up and she's got mickey uh you know outside and he's like you know this guy's like this guy could murder you he's an internet guy and she's like i'll be fine and she sees his son and he's like one of your nutters nutters is here dad and he's like, oh, yes, about the doctor. So they go into his little shed uh, so nobody can hear them talking. And she and he has uh, pretty much the doctor figured out. You know, he's he's got a a, a photograph of the Kennedy assassination, uh, which is, uh, you know, slightly alluding to um, the first episode, which aired, I believe, the day before 
the Kennedy assassination or a couple days before. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, it talks about him, say, uh, the doctor saving a family from the Titanic and also saving somebody from a uh, Krakatoa. Um, and he's got a, like a drawing of him, which and a really bad Photoshop picture, you know, like this is 2005 BBC. And, well, I, th I don't even think this was BBC one, right? This was on uh, one of the other BBCs. And uh, <laughs> so the effects are so, so, but that's always been some of the charm of Doctor Who, you know, with the explosion of the hotel. Uh, that wasn't so great, but uh, again, it's part of the charm of Doctor Who, and it's part of what I love of it. So he's pretty much figured out that the Doctor is an alien. He thinks he's immortal, um, and everywhere he goes, death follows. Death is his only companion. He's a he's the storm in the wake, and um, he warns Rose that uh, basically, if he's here, that something's about to go down. It's really bad. Uh, so she walks out, goes back to, uh, uh and, oh, in the meantime, Mickey, uh, while he's waiting, um, Mickey fights a trash can and gets eaten by a trash can and, uh, replaced. So Rose comes out and there's the, uh, basically a very bad, uh, Westworld version of, of, uh, Mickey in the car. And it made me think, you know, Westworld, uh, Westworld could be a Dr. Who episode. It could, if it was better, the season two was better, but, um, uh, Mickey takes uh, Rose. Uh, so they go out to pizza, and you know he's all pizza, pizza, and she doesn't catch on because she's all wrapped up in the whole doctor thing. And uh, when they get to the pizza place, he starts interrogating her about the doctor, and she finally figures out what's up. And uh, the doctor shows up with a bottle of champagne, pops it open, Nikki, uh, Mickey's face, uh, his face, you know, contorts a little bit, and then he attacks rose and uh, some people you know after of course he gets his head pulled off um and the body uh starts attacking them anyway and chasing him out they run into the tardis and we get to see the inside of the tardis for the first time and this was this was great gave me gave me goosebumps again uh i love this scene where she rose just runs in and immediately runs out and uh checks around and uh she's pretty much overwhelmed uh her boyfriend might be dead she's in this box that's bigger on the inside and she sees the doctor playing with the, the plastic head and hooking up diodes to it uh, to trace the signal. And uh, she's pissed off that uh, he didn't even know, didn't even think about her boyfriend and the fact that he might be dead. He's like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, this is after he uh, tells her that he is an alien and from outer space and that's his ship. Um, and she's taking this all in. And then Mickey's head starts to melt. So they have to take off. The TARDIS takes off. It moves. That freaks Rose out as well. Um, and uh, they move right right around where the London Eye is. And she, uh, you know, wonders about Mickey again. And the doctor forgets again. So she's like, you're right. You are alien. Screwed off. And uh, the doctor, you know, finally goes off and goes, listen, you know, I might not remember some kid named Mickey, which he calls Ricky later on, which is funny because that does come up later. And, um, you know, but I'm trying to save all you idiots here on the human, you know, on this planet when you, when you don't even know what the hell's going on. So, uh, you know, they move on and they, they, uh, figure, you know, actually it's Rose who figures out that the London eye is what the, uh, the nesting consciousness is using for a transmitter. Uh, and they, you know, and then that's where we get the first fantastic from, uh, Christopher Eccleston. Um, and they go under it and they find uh the nesting consciousness and it's like this big vat of living plastic and he tells rose that he's not going to kill it uh he's got a little bottle of anti-plastic and he tells rose he's not going to kill it he's going to give it a chance like he always does and uh he uh asks for an audience with the nesting consciousness and gets it and it turns out that they nabbed the tardis uh and this is where the first hint we get about the time war uh you know the nesting consciousness is basically invading earth he wants to know why and it's because their planet was destroyed um and all we hear at this point is like listen i couldn't save any of the planets i tried like right? you know but you can hear uh in this first episode which pilots are always kind of rough uh christopher christopher eccleson is really one of the best actors out there right now who who doesn't get enough work i know i've heard he's hard to deal with uh, but he plays the doctor so well. You could you can hear the hurt in his voice when he's when he's screaming. Listen, I tried to save all the planets, but I couldn't save them. You know, and 
he's absolutely like acting his ass off basically it was really good um the nesting cautionists of course is spooked by the tardis they start attacking uh the doctor or basically just grabbing him and uh to keep him from using the anti-plastic um all of a sudden the signal goes out and all the uh mannequins start attacking everybody and the first person to get killed is poor clive he's out shopping with his wife and he gets uh, murdered right in front of his wife and child so we get to see that uh you know people did die in doctor who but that was pretty brutal and uh jackie's mom was uh not jackie uh, uh rose's mom jackie was out shopping and uh you know even when rose tried to warn her to go back inside jackie wasn't listening to her she's all i'm gonna go shopping tra you know and uh, they she ends up getting attacked and you know by some uh, bride mannequins and it's it's a pretty funny scene uh, actually uh, I, I that's why I love this episode the uh, you know the autons they all look like they're popping and locking uh, but they're killing people at the same time so the doctor uh, is saved by Rose uh, because she was like a bronze medal gymnast and she swings on a rope and, and knocks over uh, a couple of the autons, frees the doctor and is able to get the anti-plastic in and they kill the nesting consciousness who was voiced by Nicholas Briggs, by the way, uh, the great Nicholas Briggs who voices um, uh, the Cybermen and the, um, the Daleks and is made quite a living uh off of a uh, big finish and stuff and is generally a good dude but i'm a big fan of him uh <clears throat> so they wrap everything up mickey is completely freaked out after he rides in the tardis and uh, he calls the doctor a thing and an alien um the doctor offers rose a trip and at first she says no uh, she checks on her mom to see if she's okay, by the way, she's okay. And, uh, the doctor offers her a trip. She says, no, you know, I got to look over this guy and, you know, I got to check on my mom. He's like, okay. All right. So he takes off. Um, and he told her, you know, it, it was, she, he could take her anywhere, but he didn't tell her one thing. So he comes back and he's all, by the way, did I tell you it was a time machine? And, uh, she looks, takes one look, looks at M Mickey and she says, thank you. And he's all, thanks for what? And she's all exactly. And she runs inside the TARDIS. And that is the end. We are off on an adventure. Um, now, I've heard some people out there, uh, maybe that's changed over time, who were not the biggest Rose fans or fans of this episode. And i that's something I just don't understand. I, you know... You know, it's some, I, I like cheesy stuff, okay? And this this might have been kind of cheesy. But uh, I thought it really set up... Uh, this is almost a perfect pilot for me. Um, it set up everything right. It, it uh, set up uh, the companion, right? It, um, a magnificent doctor. We got this background... Um, unlike mystery box bullshit, you know, they give us hints without answering everything that... But they give us enough info to where like, ooh, I got to know what's going on. Now... You know, the word was out that there was a time war. A lot of people knew that before the series started. But um, if if I hadn't have known that, I still would have been intrigued. Um, now, uh, you know, the the first season's got a couple of missteps, but not nothing too horrible. And um, Christopher Eccleston is a, like one of my top three or four doctors. I, I freaking adore him. Um, also, seriously, the best toys of of any show that i've ever seen i know there's all your kenny St kenner star wars fans and gi joe guys i've been collecting toys since i was a kid something like 40 years and seriously so by the way this is my i made this i made my own bad wolf um well made it by i painted it okay i just painted that on it and uh you know unfortunately the batteries are dead on this one this thing lights up makes like a million noises it, it spins uh it's brilliant and then the detail and the paint job on these action figures, by the way, five inch is a perfect size. And we have Rose and uh, okay, this is not the best Rose. Okay, they had to do a second version of Rose. That it, it looks like um, Ron, to be honest with you, instead of Rose. Um, but this is a great sculpt of Eccleson in a little action pose. And this is the only Mickey figure we got. Uh, but again, these are brilliant, brilliant toys, brilliant show. I'm gonna get to the chat now. And um, who doesn't love Doctor Who? Now, uh, what really made me want to do this was just what Doctor Who has become. Uh, and again, Dakota, thank you for the for the super chat. And uh, for Grafodder, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, Rose is, I mean, she while she's not my favorite companion, I, I don't know if I have, I guess what, my favorite companion uh, is Amy Pond. 
but Rose is close. I love Donna. I love Martha as well. Um, but you know, th this show, this show started, um, it was basically inspired by Buffy of all things. That's what Russell T Davies had said. And his era is, uh, kind of a modern Buffy. It really is. Um, and this is prior to the tenant era. And, uh, you know, I, I cannot watch it just once. I'm going to have to go watch the rest of this for the rest of the day after this. And, uh, you know, this is something I, I kind of mused over doing, uh, but, uh, you know, we had some people in the chat who said they wanted, wanted me to cover the show and, I, I mean, I could cover the show for the rest of the year and be completely happy. Be completely happy. My favorite couple are uh, Matt Smith and Karen Gillan. Mako, they had a very good chemistry. They did. Um, but I would have to say that the chemistry between Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper was a little better than David Tennant and Billy Piper. Now, I, some people might disagree with me on that one, but that's how I feel. Uh, Yes, uh, Gravain. Jackie is hilarious. And the growth these characters have over the next two seasons is like five seasons worth of growth. Um, uh, Russell T. Davies, uh, you know, I wish he, you know, I know he's done some other stuff. All right. Um, I don't know if it's uh, he, what did he do? Queer as Folk. And he did a kid show that I, I forgot the name of. Uh, thank you for the five dollar super chat. Uh, the best line, uh, the best line nine has is when Jack says bigger on the inside. And nine says, you better be. <laughs> oh, Captain Jack. We get Captain Jack this season. And, you know, I know he doesn't even show up this episode, but um, the greatest, uh, the, the biggest mistake in the, uh, from the Moffat era was not bringing back Captain Jack. It, everybody wanted it. Absolutely everybody wanted it. And I don't know why they didn't do it. Uh, it's, it's a damn shame. And I hope we get some more tor Torchwood someday because I love Torchwood. We also got a mention of the shadow proclamation in this one, which we see, see later. Um, and another thing that, uh, RTD is very good. At, one of the best at is payoffs. His payoffs are so goddamn good. Uh, for anything he hints, he, he doesn't forget anything. Okay. Uh, Stephen Moffat cannot say the same. Uh, yeah, man of action. Torchwood was pretty heavy, uh, and it was also free, pretty inconsistent, but, uh, John Berriman is just a charming dude and a charming actor. And he's one of those guys that just makes everybody like him when he's around him. Uh, and he also had great chemistry, chemistry with Christopher Eccleston. Uh, getting back up to the chat here. Um, you know, I will cover the 1996 movie, by the way. I love the eighth doctor. All hell. Uh, yeah. Hey, all e Eccleson, doctor who hell. Yeah. It says man of action. Fuck. Yeah. Um, you know, it, again, it's a simple episode, uh, but it's brilliant in its simplicity. Um, Another thing that I loved about the early episodes was Doctor Who Confidential. You got to see a behind the scenes uh, and they did one for every episode and they stopped doing it uh, around the Matt Smith era, which I just don't know why, uh, which is too bad. And you can still see those on all the DVDs. Uh, in America, currently, you cannot get uh, a region, a region one Blu-ray of uh, Doctor Who. Uh, you can you can go on eBay and try to get that. Uh, 50th anniversary box set that they did for a couple thousand bucks. Um, or you can get the DVDs, but uh, you can get some, you know, region two Blu-rays, but you can't get any region one right now. I think you can get season one, but you can't get the rest uh, unless you have a regionless Blu-ray player, which I guess a lot of people have right now. Uh, yeah, if I recall correctly, I love the chemistry between David Tennant and Donna Noble. That was the best, the best. Uh, their chemistry was excellent. Uh, I want uh, a TARDIS Dalek Rose and David Tennant or Matt Smith. I need to start a collection. Well, now might be the right time, Mary Ashmead, because the, the value has gone down a little bit. Um, but the, I don't think the value will go down much. I have, uh, I have, uh, I, I like loose action figures, so I took them all out of the package, but I have every, 
Doctor Who figure right up to where um, I, I uh, Capaldi, the Capaldi era, every repaint, every everything. Um, I have all the build of figures, which were crazy expensive to get. I think I paid 400 bucks for that. Uh, wow. Grafodder. Uh, one of, uh, my mates was nagging me to watch Dr. Who for a long time back in 2009. Then I watched series one in one day <laughs> after, <laughs> uh, after got, uh, got another st other stuff in classics and spent an obscene amount of money on uh, Briggs finish. Yeah. Me as well. Me as well. I have, uh, yeah, I've got, uh, boxes of big finish boxes. Um, I, uh, was able to procure all the seasons of Dr. Who and I did the same. Uh, I did the same. I started burning through all the old ones and I watch a couple episodes every week, every week. Uh, Mary Ashmead like Torchwood. It's funny is my wife does not like Dr. Who, but she loves Torchwood. Uh, I first watched Dr. Who when I was about eight, 1974 here in Australia. What's up, David Hill? Uh, uh, and, uh, Diane says I have that Blu-ray set. Yes. I went ahead and, uh, I sold mine. That's the one thing I sold because I'm able to, uh, the, the only thing, the bummer thing is you can't get the confidentials. Uh, so, um, but I still have my DVDs. I guess I could watch it on my DVDs. Uh, but I sold mine. I got like an obscene amount of money for it. Um, but now that, now that everything's on Amazon at all, all the time, I, I can watch it. Uh, but I think it did hurt Doctor Who a little bit moving from Netflix to Amazon when it did. Uh, yeah, the fourth Doctor was the trendsetter. Yeah, that, that was the one that uh, exploded in America. And, you know, the biggest mistake, the, the BBC has made a ton of mistakes with the show recently. But I think the biggest one, um, I don't know what was behind Tennant and Russell T. Davies leaving. Um, it's better to go out on top than then burn yourself. I, I don't know. I'm a firm believer burn better to burn out than the fade away. But, uh, you know, they bailed out right before it hit in America and right around the 50th anniversary, right around 2011, 2012, it got huge here and, and it's still pretty popular, but the popularity has waned. It has waned. Um, and I think they've made a lot of mistakes to lead to that part, partially sticking with Moffat too long. Um, there's a lot of reasons, but, um, you know, I just, uh, in the, in the state it's in now, that's why I really wanted to go watch some good stuff. But uh, yeah, I also, I also have to remember it's in its 11th season. And, uh, even a show that does change up every few years, 11 seasons is long in the tooth. Okay. Uh, after watching the classics, our RTD's fixation on Rose 10 love story started kind of to irritate me too. And, and 10 in general, grat fodder. Uh, if you're watching the old ones, yeah. Uh, I thought it was good because it was the one time the doctor made the mistake of falling in love with the companion and uh, probably never, ever to do that again. Uh, kind of think, look at it as, you know, it did go on for a long time, but look at it as, you know, when James Bond got married, like he did that once and he's never doing it again. Uh, I saw the Blu-ray set of uh, Doctor Who. It comes with the sonic screwdriver, but it's a thousand bucks. Yes, Nihilus Shadow, it's a thousand bucks. Um. It retailed for 300, I think. Uh, I found all thir 13 doctors on Amazon. I think I might buy them. Uh, the, uh, the box set. Yes. You can get the box set for like a hundred bucks. Uh, tenant was on broad church, big success. Uh, yeah. Tenant is, uh, and he's going to be in good omens too. I cannot wait for that. No, Ed, tenant is a great actor. He's a freaking great actor and uh, he's great in everything he does. He made Jessica Jones season one. Uh, Broadchurch was a little dark for me, but I loved him. Uh, he was even great in Harry Potter, which is honestly the first place I saw him. Uh, part of the problem was Clara was a backstep in terms of companion, which didn't uh, sit well with people, says Dakota Stanton. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Especially when they sold her as one thing and they gave us another. I have the Doctor Who magazine that says the, uh, the you know, the sassy computer whiz. And she was supposed to be fun and not like 
judgmental and angry and yeah uh, Moffat was pretty patchy with his writing yes he was Slur uh yeah the purple man was epic uh biggest mistakes that rtd did was making tenant uh to use fake accent and not his real one <laughs> and not his scottish accent. i like his accent um that's what uh people got used to yeah yeah that i don't know what that decision was a tenant is charming uh even doing an american accent uh david Tennant is amazing scrooge mcduck Catherine tate also makes a great uh magic dispel awesome uh and how many of you out there have listened to the big finish stuff i was so happy to hear when he was going to come back to do that uh tenant was a great uh follow on the choice uh as follow-up for doctor he was he was uh he also played you know the the tragedy of the time war really really good um i love the 50th anniversary special i really do but the taking away of the time war thing um i really love that aspect of it i did uh what's big finish asked mako it's audio dramas it's uh audio dramas i think nicholas briggs owns it right correct me if i'm wrong or he's in involved with it somehow and they bring everybody back you know they they um they've been doing it for a long long time and they have uh they did a 50th anniversary special of their own uh with all the older doctors which was great which was great um but they do some uh, i think uh, i don't know is matt smith doing stuff now i wasn't paying attention but uh, i know um that uh that uh, tenant came back with uh, rose um i bought all the tenant stuff i was listening to uh to some of that on the way home from comic-con and the one thing i did notice at comic-con is that the thing that still sells for doctor who is anything with tenant on it you know so so it's basically the fourth doctor all over again with david Tennant, and you know that's going to happen when you change out the cast you know once in a while uh the, the whole bad wolf, wolf story blew me away honestly it Grovain, it Gr uh, grove lane i can talk it did um one of my favorite moments in doctor who is uh at the end of turn left when um the bad wolf just shows up everywhere uh ah uh, and the music builds up and murray gold you know doing the music you know season one was not his best season for a soundtrack i will say but he really finds his way and is really bombastic and is great uh smith and eccleson uh no smith and eccleson are are, are not doing it uh they've got an impersonator for uh for 10 and 11 from companions they've only got rose jackie uh jack and donna uh briggs is one of the founders and he did uh fan audios back in the day uh on tapes and some of those adapted into bfa proper uh ever heard of uh his audio visuals i have not Grafodder. i gotta look into that the last episode i watched uh last night was tenant running out and seeing bad wolf uh written everywhere ah ha, ha, turn left yes uh turn left is a brilliant episode everybody you know hey blink is great that's everybody's favorite that's everybody's favorite but uh um i guess my favorite episode is utopia i like utopia captain jack the master returns the build-up at the end there that was epic epic stuff good stuff uh the moon egg thing made me uh stopped watching says dakota stanton <laughs> you are not the only one that was a re ridiculous episode it really did it really was uh oh hey eccleson left the series under a cloud short story they had a falling out but he uh wanted to keep working so he left quietly yeah uh it was something with the uh upper management at bbc not sure what it was we've never heard specifics uh my favorite episode was the one with john hurt aka the war doctor that would be the 50th anniversary special that was damn good that was damn good i'll give it i'll give it to moffat for that one um john sims master was badass he was great uh briggs did all of them back in the 80s first they were uh very bad in audio quality they did recordings 
for effects on location, but then almost, uh, uh, then it's almost real. Uh, Minion Hell, uh, Sword of Orion are some of the audios and audio visual adaptations. Briggs, Doctor Once. Uh, Doctor was once, yeah, uh, there was a comic too. You're right. Oh, hey, Apple Crow. Midnight, the episode before Toon Left was suspenseful as hell. Yeah. I, I love that. The, hey, we spent a bunch of money on an episode, so we need one that's basically just on a set. And sometimes that's when we get our best acting. Yeah, it's it's the doctor on a bus or on a shuttle that's uh, driving out on a planet that's a, a pure diamond and they can't even look at it. <laughs> so they're driving out on a planet um and they i guess they can open the doors for a second that are covered but even it would just burn you and there's something alive out there and they there's nothing that at all that could be living and we never really find out what it is it takes over somebody and it gets really creepy yeah it's a creepy episode uh yeah it's one of the best anniversary specials it definitely is uh it definitely is I haven't watched Doctor Who in forever. Uh, I think you should go back and watch it. Not to should you or anything. But uh, yeah, I was just going to peg like my favorite episodes for the channel, but uh, maybe I'll do more. We'll see. We'll see how this does. We'll see how this does. Uh, and I'm going to go up through the chat. We'll be on for a few more minutes. Uh, again, thank you for all the super chats. Uh, but watching this just makes me miss it more. It's, it's, it's sad. It's sad that this is a show that's still running, but it is a shadow of its former self. And, you know, hopefully the new one will bring in a bunch of new fans, but I know a lot have jumped off, but I will always be a fan of this era and the older who, and, uh, especially tenants era and who knows he's young enough. Maybe he'll come back for another anniversary. You never know. Uh, the reflective night mic knob is it this thing <laughs> it's gonna hypnotize you dakota <laughs> i'll be sure to put a piece of tape over it <laughs> just to avert your eyes um maybe i can move it hang on no i can't ah, there we go no that's still gonna reflect sorry we'll fix it next time uh give it a tie give it a try Grovain. give it a try uh, Midnight's Paranoia reminded me of a Twilight Zone's The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street episode. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, uh, people turning on each other and, you know, we don't know who the bad guy is. Uh, the whole mimicking thing, that was crazy. And then when the doctor gets taken over, holy shit. Uh, you can always do long videos about spe uh, a specific doctor, like a four-hour extravaganza about the 10th doctor, then the 11th, etc. More like discussions about the actors, companions, storylines. Yeah, that's a great, that's a really good idea, Mako. I like that. I, I like the one where Tennant is wearing 3D glasses, where he loses Rose and Donna shows up uh, in a wedding dress. Yes, that's the that's where Rose's goodbye with the Cybermen taking on the Daleks. It's great. Uh, they did a theater play of Midnight without a Doctor Who reference. Really? uh like they did robots of death play bit way back in the day huh i did not know that yeah so uh probably the next episode i'll do on the channel uh you know i gotta think about that i mean there's the obvious choices but um I have to think about that i have a couple so when i say my favorites it's probably going to be end up being half the season but uh we shall see. We shall see. So I'm going to wrap this up. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope we had a good time talking about uh, Doctor Who a little bit, and we can do this more. And patrons, you'll be getting a lot more of this stuff, so I hope you can put up with it. And um, yes, we do have a Patreon. Check us out. Patreon.com slash neurotic. You get stuff. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Doctor Who changed though the last season, and this new one was has lost something to the show. It did, it did. It lost, uh, it lost its fun and charm. Um, and thank you for being the best chat on YouTube. I really appreciate it, and thank you for joining me for this. Uh, check out all of our other stuff at nerdrotic.com. That's where our schedule is. Our next live stream will be recapping uh, Castle Rock. 
Castle Rock, which is Wednesday. Wednesday night. There's good. They're going to show three shows. So that's going to be a long one. Everybody, you have a great day. Everybody stay fantastic. And I'll see you on the next one. And if this does well, like I'll set a regular time for it. Okay. So uh, thank you, Pen Farm Girl. I hope you enjoyed it. Whovians out there. And uh, yeah, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And may the small folks sing songs of your greatness. Ciao, everybody.